Last time we talked about the Q Sprite plugin, we learned to use more than just the default three frames of animation for our sprites. We also learned how to set up different walking, running, and idle poses. But the thing is, QSprite isn't limited to those basic built-in poses, and you can use it for events as well. So today we're going to dive into that. By the way, stick around or just skip to the end of the video, I guess, because I'm going to talk about a special giveaway at the end. Today, we are in spooky land because it is one week away from Halloween. Are you excited? Oh my gosh, I'm really excited. Halloween is my favorite holiday of all of them, and I'm going to be a bat this year. Not that anyone asked me. <laughs> So, since we're in spooky land, I think that we should be a black cat. Tis the season, after all. So, I went hunting around on itch.io, and I found this really adorable, free cat sprite set. Oh my gosh. It comes with so many built-in poses, and this handy picture with text that explains all of the poses. Technically, since every single pose is already on one big sprite sheet, there's no need to open it up in GIMP like I usually do, but I think that it helps to visualize our cells. What is a cell? A cell is each individual little frame within the sprite sheet. And our cat sprite sheet is a 64 by 64 pixel cell style. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the grid to 64 by 64. And now we can get a visual on how many cells there are within this thing. A lot. Since the last few rows are empty anyway, I'm going to go ahead and crop our image. We didn't need those blank cells. Now, since this is a pretty big image, I'm not going to individually count every single one of these cells. So what I'm going to do is go to canvas size. Our width is 896 pixels. So open up a calculator. We're going to take 896 and divide it by 64, our cell size. And that will tell us that we have 14 cells across or 14 columns. We'll need to use that in the QSprite editor later, which we already learned how to use in the last video. Go watch it if you need a refresher. Taking note of that off to the side, I'm going to then look at our height. The height is significantly bigger, so 4,226. Let's take that, 4,226, and divide by 64 again. Hey, I didn't crop it correctly. I left a few pixels down at the bottom. That will throw off the entire calculation and the entire everything. So let's fix it. We need to make sure that we don't have even a single extra pixel outside. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now go all the way up. Okay, now let's look at the canvas size again. 4,224, that should work. And we get, okay, we are 66 cells tall. So 66 rows. This is a big sprite sheet. I will export that into our characters folder. And remember, whenever we're working with QSprite, we always start with a percentage sign and then the config. Since this is such a big file, I think I'll call the config big. Big, little dash, spooky cat, export. And then onto our beloved QSprite editor. I will start by making a new config type and we're going to call it big. It has to perfectly match our sprite name. Now for our sample image, we will go images, characters, percent, big. Here we go. If you will recall, we were 14 rows across and 66 columns. Oh my gosh, this is so big. I've actually never worked with a sprite sheet this big before. I'll quickly on my own set up the basic walking and idle poses. And now we have a cat. Now let's try to set up an actual pose, one that we can play to give our character a little bit more life and make our scenes a little bit more cinematic. We have a plethora to choose from here, so I'm just going to pick this little licking paw one. It's so cute. Set up this pose the same way you would set up your walking or idle poses, except this time we don't need a directional number because this pose isn't going to be direction locked. Let's just name it Lick Paw and no spaces in these pose names. Also, try not to give it any funny like capitalization or characters or anything like that because you're going to have to reference this exactly whenever you're calling the pose later. So now that we have our little pose created, let's save and then go back into RPG Maker. So how do we wanna play this pose? Typically, whenever you're playing a pose, it's going to be because of a cutscene. So let's make a cutscene. 
Starting right here, I'm just going to do an auto run event and I'll do all of my basic tint screen map zoom stuff to make the screen fade in all pretty like. Now actually playing the pose, we're going to use a plugin command. All of this is so well documented on the Q website, so definitely check it out whenever you're making your own poses. To start, calling any pose through Q Sprite, you type in Q Sprite. This is important, it's a lowercase Q and an uppercase S. Next you put in your character ID. That's who plays this pose. For us, it's going to be the player, so there are three options we can use. We can either just type in player, like I've done, type in the letter P, lowercase, or the number zero. Zero is always player. For the next part, we actually have a couple of options. We could either play a pose, or we could loop a pose. For now, let's just play it. So type in play, and then you type in the name of your pose exactly. Ours was Lick Paw. Then finally, there are some options we can add at the end. I'm going to go ahead and add weight to the end. It's just like checking the weight box on a show movement route. And what it means is that the rest of the event is going to wait to run until our pose finishes playing. I'll add in a few weight commands just to make everything run a little bit smoothly. And then after we've played our pose, we'll just control self switch A to on and we'll leave that page blank so it won't do anything. So if this works out, we should fade the screen in. Our cat takes one step down. We play the paw licking pose and then we have control. Perfect. Now let's go into some other options with playing the pose. Instead of putting wait at the end of our pose, let's put pause. What this will do is pause on the last frame of the pose after the pose has finished playing and keep it there until we tell it to go away, basically. This is going to look silly with this sprite in this pose, but it can actually be really useful whenever you're doing cutscenes, especially when you have a lot of different characters doing different things at the same time. It's good to know about the pause option. But then how do we get out of that pose? Well, the easiest way is another plugin command. We're going to do Q Sprite, Player, and Clear. That'll send you back to your basic move and idle poses before you started playing random poses. Now, the next way we can show a pose is actually really important. And that is, instead of using play, we're going to use loop. I took away our clear plugin command so that you could see whenever you use loop, but then don't clear it, the character is literally going to play that pose over and over again, even as you move them around, which could be useful in some cases, but is absolutely not great right now. So I'm just going to go back in and make sure that we have that clearing. Now the screen should fade in, our little cat should take a step down, she should then lick her paw for roughly 200 frames, and then we regain control. Perfect. Off camera, I actually went ahead and added some more poses for our cat, and also some other characters with poses that we can play. So let's set up some events. First and foremost, the most important thing whenever you are setting up an event with QSprite. I know that this looks so funky, but you want to leave this little white box thing in the very top left position. If you move it here, or if you move it down here, it's not going to work correctly. So put it there, and then, let's say I want this cat to be facing to the right. So I will go ahead and add a comment, and I'm going to point it in direction six. If you remember from our first video, direction six is actually facing right. So hopefully this cat will face right whenever we load into the game. And there it is, it's in its idle pose facing right. But what about actually showing poses for the cats? Oh my god, they're kissing. <laughs> Cute. Okay, enough distractions. Let's get rid of this cutscene that we added. And then let's add one more cat just because we can. And now we're going to make an event that's going to show some poses. Let's use this treasure chest. It's going to activate just like a regular event with the action button. You click on it, the event plays. The first thing we'll do is we'll play another pose for the player. So Q Sprite zero for player, play, and this pose is called touch. So touch, and we'll make it a wait. 
After that pose has finished playing, we'll then play a sound effect, change the treasure box's image to a monster, and then we're going to play some more poses. Fresh for the orange cat. When you're playing a pose with Q Sprite for one of the events, you need to remember the event ID. You can find it up in the top left corner of the event editor page for that event. Since the orange cat is event 14, we're going to do Q Sprite, event 14, or to simplify it, E14, and we're going to do a loop pose. So we will loop, hiss. We don't want to wait for this pose to finish playing. We're not going to add anything at the end. Let's do another one. This is for the white cat that I added in, and it's event 16. So Q Sprite, E16. We're not going to loop its pose. It's not going to be as disturbed, so it's just going to play stand. And then it'll go back to normal after the pose is played. Finally, for the player, we're going to do Q Sprite, zero for player this time. Remember, we could do zero or player. We're going to loop, hiss, and we're going to add the word breakable here at the end. What that means is this pose will actually continue to play until you move. Even after the event has already gone to self switch A, the pose will continue to play until we eventually press one of the direction buttons on our keyboard and move the kitty cat. After the event has played, the white cat will go back to normal, but the orange cat will be hissing forever. Poor thing. We don't want him to stay like that, so let's go ahead and do another event. Instead of turning on self switch A this time for our treasure box, we're going to change it to actually turn on a switch. We'll call the switch scary box. If switch scary box is on, that's when we'll activate page two. But also, that's where we'll activate page two of our kitty cat. And now, whenever we press the action button on the orange kitty, after Switch Scary Box is turned on, we're going to do Q Sprite Event 14, the orange kitty, clear. That way it'll stop hissing because we've comforted it. We obviously could have done this in that other event, but I just think it's cool to see different triggers for different poses. Now let's take a look. Hello kitty. Hello other kitty. Let's see about this scary box now. We'll touch it. Oh, and as expected, the scary box scared the cats. Did you see how we looped until I moved the cat around? But then Orange Kitty's over here looping forever. You okay, kitty? Aw, now you are. And that's basically how you set up poses. You can do so much with the Q-Sprite poses. I personally use Q-Sprite poses in like every single cutscene. It's so much easier than the default way of like changing out your player or event images. Of course, if you're used to doing it that way, then it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. I also had to go through that learning curve, but now it's like second nature to me. So what do you think? Will you be using Q-Sprite in the future? Or do you have a different way of doing all of this? I'd actually love to know about it in the comments. While I use and love Q-Sprite, it really doesn't work for everybody. So any other suggestions that anybody has could be really helpful to someone. And if you stuck around this long, you may have noticed some spooky music playing in the background. Well, you now have a chance to win that music! Composer Famed Mimic was so freaking awesome to reach out and send us some Steam codes for their new Gothic Castle Music DLC for RPG Maker MV and MZ. Because this is a Steam DLC, you're going to have to have either MV or MZ in your Steam library in order to be able to use it. So keep that in mind. Now, the rules for actually entering the giveaway are super easy. Just leave a comment on this video with the words spooky music in the comment. And also within that comment, let me know if you have RPG Maker MV or MZ. I'll use a randomizer to pick a winner and announce them next week for Halloween. And it's as simple as that. So remember, spooky music. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I hope that this tutorial helped you out. Let me know what other kind of tutorials you'd like in the future. I have a running list that I am slowly going to get to eventually. If you want to support me, consider liking the video, subscribing, or buying me a cup of coffee. Ah, okay, I've yapped enough. Remember to comment for the giveaway. I'm going to pick a winner by Halloween, so I'll announce the winner in next week's video. So basically, you only have one week to comment. Hi, sorry about that. Anyway, bye!